Get us the care package. Hey. No, just get it to us. Yeah, I hear it. Hook us up. Look at that, guys. One for each. Let me take you back to the year 2012. This was the year of release for Black Ops 2. Now, I'm sure many of you remember this game with rose tinted glasses and very fondly, and you know, all the memories you made, all the late night parties and stuff on 360. You get me. You have Uno, you fucking dick. Fuck you yeah. Make you tell people about how you want fucking dick in your mouth. Why, man? Teammate just killed me out of the fucking pussy. But today, I'm here to talk to you about COD Zombies with Black Ops 2 and how this game went from possibly one of the worst entries we've ever seen in the franchise to the most beloved and standardized game when somebody talks about COD Zombies, you immediately think of this game. So, without further ado, let's get into this. Hype from Black Ops 1 was nuts. Zombies was popping off and people were very excited to see where the story and gameplay was going next, especially since we had a new face for the director of Zombies now, Jimmy Zielinski. People were very excited to see where he would take the game and what he would innovate. There was already a large wait between Black Ops 1 and Black Ops 2, and in between it was a Modern Warfare title which had no new Zombies content, so people were pretty much starved and ready for some new Zombies action. It meant that when we finally got the game, people went nuts. From its teaser trailers, Transit was initially theorised to be like a Zombies campaign due to its size and trailer interest so people were very very excited for, for this new era of zombies and lo and behold people loved it initially This is due to a theory of all new COD games are like the deem buyers remorse Everybody gets really hyped and adores the game for about a month or so more like a week nowadays People take a mental step back and realize the game they're playing and those little things that are creeping up annoying Like the turbine and waiting for the bus and the lava and the denizens and are starting to add up Transit was becoming very much hated by the community This is not only because of its tediousness, but the way you got around the map from the bus to the denizens to the fire everything nobody wanted to play this anymore a few people would jump and ship back to bo1 because they know it was a good reliable source for some zombies action but this was only the beginning of the storm a storm that could have potentially killed zombies surely they had to make a better map than transit for their dlc one come on it's paid is what we all thought Now, I'm sure you're thinking, huh? Growth? Surprisingly, this didn't stop people from buying Black Ops 2 and still wanting to play the shit out of zombies, despite its lackluster content, and that's when it dropped. The thing that I argue could have killed zombies. Die Rise. Die Rise was a brand new zombies experience that focused on verticality, a new mechanic that would age like milk. Upon its release, unlike Transit, people immediately hated the map and started to complain about its mechanics and how the map plays. It played and still plays horribly, like the disruption of flow with waiting for perks in the elevators, or the literal fucking wonder weapon being a nuisance because it makes you more likely to fall off the map. The new perk, Who's Who, also sucked balls, and it was like a really bad quick revive. This, however, was the shitstorm before the good. DLC 2, we got Mob of the Dead. This map, in my opinion, was phenomenal. It was due to a new lead and a new era of zombies I like to call the Blundell Golden Era. Holy shit, two errors in one game? What the fuck? It featured a returning idea from Black Ops 1 of a celebrity cast, but this time it was four mobsters that were held up in Alcatraz prison during its operative period sometime in the 1930s, for you story nerds. Not only was the story amazing, but the gameplay, oh my god, it was good. You built a fucking plane and crashed it into the Golden Gate Bridge as it was being built. You fed demon dogs to get a boomerang tomahawk, all of this with a new afterlife system, man it was a good time to be a zombies fan. Budget for zombies was very clearly increasing too. DLC wasn't cheap back then. 15 USD a pop? That's extortionate. I'm going back to Cold War Zombies. All jokes aside, Blundell had done it. Blew it out of the water with his new map and was positioned Director of Zombies, meaning that he got the chance to call the shots on the new zombies maps now. That was until we got a very weird surprise, and it was a visit from Zelensky with his DLC 3 Buried. Now upon release, people were naturally very skeptical, but found that it was actually a very very, very good map. It flowed very well and had a load of mechanics like Leroy that kept the player busy. Although still janky, the buildable system was refined and we got a conclusive ending to the Victor story. It was, however, the end of the line for Zelinski. And sadly, this would be his final map in Zombies history. It's good that it ended with a banger, though. Now, hang on just a second. I think I'm forgetting something. Oh yeah, make sure to absolutely annihilate that like button. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe as if you want to see more video essays like this, it shows me that you guys are in support of it. And if you really, really want to help out the channel and get some exclusive perks, consider becoming a member today. You get some sick little badges next to your name and also get a chance to be in the next video. Like this one I'm about to show you right now. I can't show too much though, because it's, 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 it's a secret. It's a secret. I died on 45. Stop the cap. Died, died. Oh. Yeah, I died. Let's go. So yeah, maybe consider it today and you'll be in the next video. All right, plug over, back to the zombies. And just 
just as the dust was settling from Mob of the Dead, from Buried, holy shit, DLC 4, Origins. This map had it all, the reintroduction of our four favourite characters with Tank Dempsey, Nikolai Belensky, Takio Masaki and Edward Richthofen. A mainline easter egg that tied things up in a nice little bow but most importantly, the Ballist. The introduction of an official boss zombie, the Panzer Zoldat. The introduction of the elemental weapon cycle which we see in today's modern zombies as well. And my god, the map was just amazing, like for fuck's sake, look at these robots bro, look at the- Blundell had done it. He'd saved the game through blood, sweat and tears, his two maps outweighed all the bad within BO2 and allowed fans to have fun with the game. This would be set in stone for as long as BO2 remained on shelves and in people's consoles and in people's hearts. As time went on and zombies became bigger and better, with Sledgehammer even having their own stab at their own iteration, with Extinction and Exo Zombies, BO2 remained the go-to trail game for some zombie slaying fun, Mob and Origins becoming two of the most fan favourite of maps, and even the other ones now become unplayable due to nostalgia and pure curiosity. Although Flawed Die Rise has become widely popular in recent years due to its weird bugs and the unpatching of the Sliquifier by shooting a fucking sign, and its verticality, now aged, does prove an interest in challenging zombies. Transit, there's no denying the map fucking sucks, there's genuinely no two ways about it, but it showed multiple things. Zelensky was being held back by technological limitations rather than innovation as the 360 and PS3 couldn't handle the sheer magnitude of transit so a lot had to be scrapped to save memory in the very low power consoles. But I found by playing the map with some friends it could be a very funny experience. 10 out of 10 definitely would recommend. Map still shit solo though so fuck that. Fast forward to this year and I feel like Black Ops 2 remains in a loved state. With the recent fixing of the servers from Microsoft and the acquisition of Activision, thousands of new players are swarming the Black Ops 2 servers and it makes my heart skip a beat honestly man it's so cute. I feel as though Black Ops 2 was also an important stepping stone to get to Black Ops 3. Without it, I feel BO3 would be an insanely different game. There's so much cut content from BO2 that ended up being incorporated into BO3 somehow, and I feel as though that it was definitely a milestone for Treyarch and the development cycle with creating video games as a whole. You made it to the end of the video, well done and thank you for sticking around. If I had to say one thing that you should take away from this video, it's that Black Ops 2 deserves so much more love than it's getting right now and it's amazing to see that with these new servers being patched and from Microsoft, that people are really starting to show their love. I've seen people go out of their way to buy fucking consoles to play this game man, it's like release day all over again, it's quite crazy. But I thank you guys so much for watching this video and you know, play some older zombies, you might unlock that little nostalgic spark in your brain that gives you all that dopamine from all the stuff you used to do with your friends, all the online friends that you made before on 360. 60 or PS3, you know, just have a nostalgia day, man. It, it, it's really worth it. I thank you guys so much for watching this video. Shout out to Mr. T Lexify for recording that voice line for me, and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.